Hello everybody, welcome back to Space Pickle Designs. As you can see here, I have an earring tutorial for you guys. I'm gonna call this the manhole ginkgo bead earrings. Um, and that's just because it resembles a manhole to me, but we're using pretty common beads here. Um, this is the colorway that we're going to be making today. So if that looks cool to you, just keep on watching. Okay, one quick note before we get started. Um, the last part in my design process, and this is after everything's been done, and I've tested a few different colors and all the things like that. Um, before I post a video, I will actually go to YouTube and type in the type of bead and style. So in this case, a ginkgo beaded earrings. Um, and just check to see like I'm not copying somebody else's stuff subconsciously or maybe I haven't seen it or whatever. Um, but for this one, I came across a channel called Beading Away and she makes another pair of ginkgo bead earrings and they're a little similar. They're still a ginkgo bead and around earrings, but they're, they're different. Um, but I wanted to um, link that video and her channel anyways because it's an awesome channel and uh, I want you to check out her stuff too. So um, it's just funny how similar we can get our things even though you know we're not even copying off of each other but hers are super cool and sassy they've got um they use Swarovski crystals and they I think she put a dangle on hers so yeah definitely go check that out and um, make both I mean they're just earrings it's not going to take too long um but anyways I will figure out how to hopefully put that up where it pops up in this little corner here at the top and um yeah just check out her channel. All right, let's go look at, take a look at the uh, materials list. All right, to make this pair of earrings, you're gonna need two ear wires. You're going to need 16 ginkgo beads. You're gonna need 32 super duos. You're gonna need 36 four millimeter fire polished rounds. And you're gonna need some 15 O's, 11 O's, and eight O's. I'm also going to use six pound fire line with a size 12 tulip beading needle. And I'm going to get about one wingspan per earring of the fire line on the needle. So we'll go ahead and grab that and then we'll get started. All right, everybody. So the first step is to take your fire line and thread on this pattern of eight 11 O's and eight super duos alternating in between each one. It really doesn't matter if you start with an 11 o or a super duo, just make sure you got eight of each on there. So we're gonna take the end here. We're going to tie a knot. I like to tie a square knot here. All right, so we're looking like that. Pull it tight up here and then we're gonna pull it down. And it's super tight right here, so you just kinda wanna wiggle it just a little bit in between your fingers so you get a little bit of wiggle room. So I started off with an 11-0 on my pattern, so I am going to go through that 11-0 again, and we're going to reinforce this a full complete time. I just like to have the extra security in there. Keep pulling it around. want at least two thread paths in this base circle here. I did leave about a four inch tail so that I can weave in the ends after we're done. Okay. All right, so we've gone around. We want to come out of the bottom of one of these super duos here. So we're going to come around and we're going to do a step up 
So any standard step up with a super duo, you just go directly to the top bead there. I flipped my piece over so I can go in that counterclockwise direction that I like to do. And now we're gonna start adding our ginkgo beads, okay? So this is how we're gonna do it. It really doesn't matter with these ginkgo beads because they're the same on both sides, but some of them are different on each side. So just make sure you put them all the same side if you have a pattern on one side and make sure like when you're putting them in a round that they're all facing the same way. But for this one, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go through the first hole here, bring it down, nestle it in between the super duos here, as you can see. And then we're gonna pick up two 15s, one 11-0, two fifteens on the needle. And we're going to go into that second hole on the ginkgo bead there, along with the next top hole of that next super duo bead. And you just kind of jostle it in place there. And that's what we're gonna have. So we're gonna do this all the way around. Go to the top bead of the ginkgo, set it down. Two 15 O's, one 11 O, two 15 O's, just like that. Second bead of the ginkgo bead and into the top bead of the next super duo. Gonna pull it down, jostle it a little bit and have it set in place just like that. Keep on going, do one more with you. Bring that ginkgo bead down, two 15 O's, one 11 O, and two 15 O's. Second bead in the ginkgo and into the next top hole of the next super duo. And you're gonna jostle it around. Now you don't have to pull it too tight at this point. Actually, it's better if you don't, but go ahead and put the remaining five ginkgo beads in and I will meet you back. Okay, so I have my last ginkgo bead in here and I've got the 15, two 15-0s, one 11 -0, two 15 -0s on my needle. I'm gonna go through that second hole of the ginkgo, the next top hole of the super duo, come out. And we've got a nice little flower. I mean, honestly, you could stop there if you just wanted a super simple pair of earrings, but we're gonna add a little bit more. So we're gonna go back up through that first ginkgo that we added if we catch one of the 15 O's, that's okay too. We're gonna go through that whole embellishment again on the top here. So we're gonna go through the two 15 O's, 11 O and two 15 O's in this round. And as you can see, that's why we're coming out right here. So now we're gonna add our second round of super duos. And we're gonna just do that by adding one 15 O one super duo and one 15 -o, as you can see here and going through that next embellishment along the top and it should fit in there quite nice again we're not pulling super hard here in order to get it to lay flat like you want you're going to want to be a little bit loose handed um, and that's like an exercise in restraint uh, for me because I like to pull everything super tight but we're just gonna keep adding this embellishment in the gaps here, because we wanna be able to step up and that super duo is gonna help us do that. All right, one 15 one super duo, one 15 on the needle. Go through the next embellishment. All right, so we've added three here. I'm going to let you continue and finish the round and I will meet you back. All right, so we're on our last little addition here of 115.0, one super duo, 115.0. We're gonna close this gap here. And we're going to do a round of, this is gonna be our actual first round of reinforcement. And like you can tell, hopefully through the video that I'm just pulling it to where the 
there's no longer any gap in the thread. I am not pulling it super tight. Again, we want this earring to lie flat and not cupped. Well, if you want it to, you know, if you want it to be a little cupped, a little three-dimensional, that's totally cool too. Um, I would probably reinforce every round then, but I personally kind of want this to be flat. And I know you're probably looking at that tail that I have in the middle there, like, why are we not cutting off this tail right now? Well, there's a reason for that. I normally don't like working with tails just because they get in my way, personally. But um, for this one, since we made that knot on the initial row, um, it's still, it's not like the most secure knot in the world. And I did that by design because if we're having cuppage in the middle or, any si any signs of buckling, you can kind of um, wiggle it around until you get it to where it lies flat. And then at the end, we will um, make another knot and then uh, secure it that way so that it can really stay in that flat shape. And don't, don't be afraid to manipulate your beadwork. Um, and what I mean by that is um, you know, taking your fingers, moving it around like this. These threads are very strong. I also like doing it just so I can test the strength of a product because some of these things I do sell. So I like to make sure that if somebody's as rough on jewelry as I am, that it's going to survive and last and it's not going to be some dainty thing that we just have to take care of all the time. That's why I don't really sell a lot of rings because I'm really hard on rings. And normally, even if I try my hardest, a, a ring will only last me a few months. Um, and that's because I'm washing my hands and with it and everything else, so. All right, so we're gonna work up our thread to this next Super Duo here. We're gonna come out the bottom, as you can see. And as you can see, there's just a tiny bit of cupping going on, just the tiniest bit. So I'm just gonna wiggle it a little bit, make sure we got a little bit of play and now it's, it's lying pretty flat. So we are going to step up and I just flipped my work over cause I still like to work in that counterclockwise fashion. I'm gonna step right up into that top hole of the Super Duo. And this is where we're gonna add our lovely fire polish beads. And we're just gonna take one four millimeter fire polish round we are going to go through this nice contrasting 11-0 right here and kind of put it in place like that. Again, we want it to pop in place, but we don't want to pull too hard. There's really no reason to do that. You'll see a little bit of threads, um, but most of it will be covered up at a later time. So again, we're just picking up one bead going through the 11 -0 and then the top hole of the Super Duos that are popping out. And y'all know me, I do love my green. So every time I do a tutorial, it seems like I have a little bit of green in there for you. We're gonna go through the top hole here. And I'm just gonna do this with you guys um, because it shouldn't take too long. No need to cut. But these work up very quickly in case you're in a time crunch for a gift or something. And they look quite impressive. They're a larger earring, um, but that's kind of like what I like. If I am just going for a dainty earring, I'll just wear a stud. But if I'm going to actually work on an earring, I want it to kind of be loud and out there. And I almost always carry extra earrings with me in case somebody um, comments on them and I'll just give them a pair because real recognizes real you know <laughs> all right so we got our last bead on here all right and as you can see we got a little bit of cupping so again we're just gonna pull and stretch just a little bit and that's all it needed to lie flat so in between these gaps here, we're coming out of that first fire polish bead that we added, right? So these are in sets of two here on the Super Duo. 
and in between we have a gap here. So this is just a perfect little gap to put in a little filler bead to strengthen the piece while also reinforcing. So we're gonna pick up an 8 and go right through and it just sits right up in there. Very pretty. And I used a matte blue iris bead for this one because I like mixing uh, the finishes and it helps to pull out some of that blue reflective metallic coating on the fire polish bead. I do apologize if you hear airplanes. This is Alaska. We have a lot of airplanes that fly around here. Little teeny ones. Um, so many airports for personal use. It's actually kind of a cool little thing we got going over here. But yeah, we also don't have air conditioning, so I have to keep my um, windows open. So I do apologize. But we're just putting uh, an Edo in between all of these gaps here. Works up super quick. And we're reinforcing because we're also putting another thread path in that round there. So this is our last Edo bead. And we're actually coming out of the first one that we added. So this is what we got. And I'm just going to work my way down one more set into the next 8 here, just because I want to put some distance. All right. So next we're going to add our ear wire and we're going to still use, be using all the size beads here. Um, so our pattern is going to be 111 0 one fire polish, 111 0 one eight oh, one eleven oh, one fire polish, and one eleven oh, and this is what it looks like on the needle. Okay, so we're coming out of the left side of this eight oh. We're going to go around and come into the right side of this eight oh. Eight oh only, and look at that. So it sits up nice like this. We're gonna go through this another complete time. So apologies for fingers in the way. I'm just reinforcing this whole uh, circle of beads that we have just added. All right, so there's our first round. We're gonna go up through again, the 11-0, fire polish 11-0. We're gonna come out of that top 8-0 right there that we're working with. And I found that seven is the magic number for my ear wires, but your ear wires may be different. I'm going to pick up seven of these 15 O's. And since my piece is the same on both sides, it doesn't matter what direction I put my ear wires in. I do have a closed um, loop ear wire here, so I do have to thread mine on. However, if you don't, um, and yours just, you can just take it apart with some pliers. You don't have to attach it on at this point, but it might be easier for you. So I pulled the ear wire down and all seven of those 15 O's, and we're coming out again, the left side of this 8 0 gonna make a round, coming through the right side. And we have our beads just sitting up right there. So I'm going to reinforce this all seven of those beads. Be careful not to catch your ear wire. Go back through the 8 -0. As you can see there, it kind of pops it into place. We're gonna go around again. Sorry for the threads in the way. Gonna go through it again. We'll tighten it up a little bit. Now we'll go through the 8 0. So we have three thread paths in there at this point. So I'm going to go down, sorry, through the 11 0. So I'm coming out of the 8 0, I'm going through the 11 0 fire polish 11 0. I'm gonna make like a figure eight, okay? So I'm gonna go back down through this 8 
come right back up do the 11 -0 fire polish 11 -0. Go right through the 8 -0 again it's getting nice and snug in there because we got all these reinforcements go back through the seven 15 O's that we added And the 8 -0. Like I said, we kind of just made a figure eight. So now we're going to go back down. We're coming out of the 11 0. We'll go back in through the 8 0. Go through the fire polish, super duo, fire polish 8 0. And now I just like to start tying knots. Now, again, I don't pull too hard. But after every set of super duos, I mean, excuse me, the um, fire polish here. So I'll come out of a fire polish. Make sure your thread is not catching on your uh, ear hook there. We don't want gaps in thread. So we're gonna come out here. I just find the thread bridge here and I make a knot, just one single knot so you can see, not pulling too hard. We have enough thread here to sort of make an entire round. So we're just making knots every so often. It really doesn't matter where you make them. And go through here. Another knot. I really like how this color combination turned out. I try to pick contrasting colors for you folks, but I also want it to look pretty good. I mean, I could make some super contrasting color choices that wouldn't look very good, just with the beads that I have on hand. Um, but I still wanna be able to wear these or give them away to somebody. So right here, I'm gonna come out of this fire polish bead right near the top. As you can see, and this one, since we've made all those holes, I am just going to hold this tight, pull my scissors up in there, and it'll come right off. So this is what we got. We got the tail thread left here, and that's what our earring is looking like. So since this one is laying very flat, um, all you have to do is attach a needle to this one and see where the thread is coming out. I would just thread it back through, going counterclockwise here, make a knot or two, but also not pulling too tight. And then I would just cut it off the same way that I cut off the other one. And then all you have to do is repeat the process one more time and you have your set of earrings. So go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll take a look at what we got at the end here. Okay, everybody, you made it. So this is the pair that we were working on. And honestly, these really do work up quick. It's a little bit slower in the video because I got to work around my camera and all that. But yeah, this is, this is what it looks like. So if you would like to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is make a comment down below and tell me which color is your favorite. This first pair, I'm going to say turtle green. This pair right here, we have some silver findings here. I'm going to call this ocean blue. And these are the double-sided ginkgos here. For this third pair here, this is just gonna be black and gold speckle. We got a purple luster here. This is going to be mustard with gold. This is pewter with silver. And then this is going to be rose gold and copper speckle. And that's all you have to do. Just make a comment down below and I will pick one of the comments or two or three, who knows how many 
comments we get. If we get a lot of comments, I'll pick more. Um, and I will pick a winner or two on 11 July. And that's just next Sunday. All right. So make these earrings. If you have the materials, tag me on all the social media so I can see what you did. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one.